Hello, this is Math Jazz from Almost Cool. This is the twelfth video in our series of videos on derivatives. Our topic today is the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem states that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists some point c between a and b, such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And what this means is that if you have a continuous differentiable function, then on an interval, the average slope of the function on that interval is equal to the instantaneous slope of that function at some point in that interval. This is why it's called the mean value theorem, is that it deals with average slope. And, and the word mean means average in this case. Related to the mean value theorem is Rolle's theorem, which says, if f is continuous on a closed interval a to b and differentiable on the open interval a to b, so far it's the same as the mean value theorem, but here's the extra hypothesis, and f of b equals f of a, then there exists some point c in the open interval a to b such that f prime of c is zero. Rolle's theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem, and it's easy to see that if f of a equals f of b, which is the extra hypothesis for Rolle's theorem, if we let f of a equal f of b and look at the fraction for the mean value theorem, the numerator turns into zero. And since the numerator of the fraction is zero, the whole fraction is zero, so f prime of c equals zero in the mean value theorem if we just let f of a equal f of b. And uh, here's the slide just so you can see that equation again. See? In Rolle's theorem, f prime of c is zero, in the mean value theorem, f prime of c is equal to some fraction, but the numerator is f of b minus f of a, so if f of b equals f of a, the numerator is zero, so the whole fraction is zero. We will not prove the mean value theorem in this video, nor will we prove Rolle's theorem, but we will note that usually if one is proving the mean value theorem, one proves Rolle's theorem first, and then from there proves the mean value theorem. Uh, Rolle's theorem is kind of a halfway point from the, the other tools that one has to, uh, to getting to the mean value theorem. And that'll be a topic for another video, actually going and proving Rolle's theorem, the mean value theorem. We'll probably also prove the intermediate value theorem in that series of videos. But in this video, we're going to see an example of how to use the mean value theorem. One of the popular problems to solve with the mean, theor mean value theorem is to prove that some function has only one zero. That is, this function equals zero at exactly one x value. It doesn't prove, or it doesn't usually calculate where that x value is, um, but it does show that there can't be two different x values that make a function zero. Here's the problem. Show that there is at most one root of side of 3x plus 7x equals zero. The first step of this is we're going to define a function to be sine of 3x plus 7x. Since f is the sum of differentiable functions, it is continuous and differentiable everywhere. That is, it's differentiable everywhere, and we know that if a function is differentiable, it is continuous. We're going to suppose that there are two roots of our function f that is f of a and f of b are both zero, and we're going to assume that a and b are not the same point. This should give us a contradiction, 
because we're trying to prove that there is only one root of this function, or or maybe there aren't any roots, but the, we're trying to prove that at m there is at most one root. So we're going to start by assuming we have two, and that should give us some sort of contradiction later on down the line. What we can know now, though, is that there is a number c between a and b, so that the derivative of f at c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. That, that's because of the mean value theorem. But since we know that f of b equals f of a, the numerator of this fraction is 0, so the whole fraction is 0, so f prime of c is 0. We could have used Rolle's theorem here, uh, and that would have been equally valid. We will now calculate the derivative. We know that when we plug c into whatever we get, we should get 0. So first we're going to calculate a formula for the derivative, and then we'll plug 0 into it, or we'll plug c into it to get 0. The derivative isn't too hard on this one. 3 cosine of 3x plus 7 is the derivative. But what we do know is that when we plug in c for x, then f prime is 0. So we get this equation. 3 times 3 cosine of c plus 7 is 0. So 3 cosine of 3c equals negative 7. So cosine of 3c equals negative 7 over 3, which is impossible because negative 7 over 3 is less than negative 1. And the lowest point on cosine of x is with has a y coordinate of negative 1 which means we have our contradiction we're saying that if we plug c into cosine we get some number that's less than negative 1 which is a contradiction and this means that our assumption that we made that there are two roots must be false which means that our function has at most one root Note, we did not actually prove that this function has a root at all. However, we did prove that if there is a root, there is only one root. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to contact me, or almost cool, at either my email address for me, or the website or Facebook page for almost cool. Feel free to email topics for videos, or to email suggestions, or to to inform me of errors in this video or to ask questions I hope that you're enjoying learning calculus I enjoy making these videos I hope you're having a great day goodbye